um, I'm going to spend some more time on uh, the Roger Rabbit, excuse me, Who Framed Roger Rabbit um, tune pistol. Um, I've also been working on the bullets. So uh, I already actually have the tune pistol uh, itself um, done. This is the wood or original. It didn't really need to be painted, but I wanted to see how it looked. So I need to make a mold box for it and um, I want to have it be permanent so I can use a little bit less silicone when I make the mold as well as ensure its rigidity and so that I get uh, consistent castings from it. So what I've done is uh, basically traced out uh, roughly the size of what the interior of the mold box needs to be. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and use this piece of wood to, uh, to create the interior space for it. I'm working in my garage and uh, I try as much as possible to keep paint fumes from becoming a problem. So I have a, a, a vacuum hose that runs down through my work table and into a shop vac. So to avoid fumes and pick up some overspray, I just turn that on. The gun, the prop, is actually wider than one of these pieces of wood. So if you were wondering um, why I created two silhouettes to cut, it's because I'm going to stack them on top of each other so my mold box will be tall enough to have uh, the gun covered on both the top and the bottom. Last project for the night is I thought I'd make a couple of um, batarangs or some of the other bat weapons that were used in um, Batman Begins and, uh, and some of the subsequent Nolan movies. So uh, what I've done is taken some spray adhesive and uh, uh, created a couple paper templates, put one on some uh, scrap uh, styrene and some one on some scrap uh, uh, thin MDF and I'll cut those out on a uh, scroll saw and see what we get. Uh, the small one is about four and a half inches wide and about an inch and a half deep and uh, this one is closer to um, seven and a quarter inches wide and about two and a half deep. Let's do some cutting to see what we can come up with.
Good morning. It is uh, Sunday morning. After I finished taping last night, I added a few more layers of primer to the batarangs and did some sanding in between. So they're looking pretty good. I think I'm at the point now where I can do a little bit of wet sanding on them and uh, see what kind of results I get. Um, I'll show you my technique, and if you've got one that works better, let me know. I'm always happy to adopt what uh, somebody recommends. Um, so the way I wet sand is uh, just some plain tap water and a drop or two of dishwashing liquid. Um, I'm going with 600 grit, and um, you know one of the mistakes I made early on is I was really saturating the um, the sandpaper, and when you're wet sanding MDF, if you get crazy with the uh, the water, the MDF is going to suck it up and it's going to start to swell. So you need to be careful that you um, are smart with it and you don't cause yourself some problems. At this point, there's probably five or six coats of primer on here, so I don't really know if the camera can any, see any real significant difference to the sanded areas versus the non-wet you know, non sanded areas. In a way, it's really a matter of touch. You can feel a difference because it starts to get a really glassy feel as opposed to um, some of the bumpiness or, I don't know, just the, the, the primary feel of it. I've had a couple times when I created molds where the, uh, the silicone didn't cure properly in certain parts of the um, on certain parts of the buck on the original, and um, I, I, I realized there was a couple reasons for that. Uh, one is uh, oftentimes I like to paint the originals the way the finished prop will look, just because I want to see what it's going to look like, and uh, a lot of my props are supposed to be metal, so I'll use. Um, chrome or silver spray paint and I'm pretty sure there's a chemical in there um, that reacts with the silicone that causes problems so I don't do that anymore and then um, I don't really know what the other issue is uh, sometimes you know everything just seems right uh, sometimes I'll be making a new mold uh, for something that I've molded and casted in the past never had a problem and again I get this jelly like goo instead of cured silicone um, but what I read and seems to work well for me is if you uh, hit both of these or hit your piece with a light coat of lacquer, um, that will keep you from having problems uh, with reactions to the silicone. And it's, it's worked great. Uh, the only thing to be really careful about with, um, with the lacquer is that uh, if you go heavy, you'll get drips. And um, because I'm using um, spray paint, so I'm using a different type of chemical. You just want to go really light so you don't get any reactions. You don't want to get orange peeling, which um, if you're not familiar with it, it's just these tiny cracks in the paint. It looks like the texture of the skin of an orange. And they are just killer to get rid of once you start getting them. 